G'day, I'm Steve Hay. Welcome to Woodworking Masterclass. It's 38 degrees or something or other ridiculous outside. So I thought I'd come down the shed, turn the aircon on and do some work. What I, uh, the last stream, I had this idea, a harp, but doing harlequin parquetry pattern on it. And that thought has not left me alone. So I thought, that's it. I'll pick a couple of colours. And my um, good friend Louise, who does the colours for me, these are the colours I have chosen, Louise. And I think they're going to look absolutely spectacular. So I will do a standalone video a little bit later on um, on uh, how to actually get it to this stage. But I've started to do it, and as you can see, it's starting to take shape. Got a lot more to do. This is the outline of the harp neck, so it'll be down here on the other side, and then I'm going to have it coming into the pillar as well. Let me just see if I can get chat up on this thing, which would be excellent if I can. There we go. Wait with me till it comes up. There we go, Louise. What did you think of the colours I picked? I've got to tell you, I'm pretty happy with them. I'm just seeing if I can... And, and there you go. Good night, Nathaniel. How are you? Okay. Um, yes, oh, hang on, let me just turn this volume down. There we go. And I'll see if I can get chat on those devices. So basically what you do to get the diamond pattern, as I said, I'll do a video to show you exactly how to do it. But you just get... You cut them into strips... Let's go over to here, cut it into strips like that, you glue it together, so you end up with a set of strips like that. Then you cut, in this case, 60 degrees, like I've got there, and then you put it up against there and you start cutting strips on an angle. But then when you put them together, you actually put them together on a slope which then will give you that diamond pattern. The other thing you can do is what they call baby blocks or Louis blocks, and you do them um, in circles, in sets of three. That the bedhead background I did last year sometime in ebony, that was Louis blocks. But this is going to be diamonds for the Harlequin harp. So let's see. G'day, Jared. How are you? Oh, no, that was embarrassment, wasn't it? Oh, okay, so you can just watch me do some of this if you want. You've got any questions, ask away. And I do have some with imperfections. That's got a, a split in it. That's fine because when I come to actually put them all together, if I've got any crook diamonds, what I do is take them out and then put in um, another one. So it's all... Nice and symmetrical, because when you go to this amount of effort, would you believe that is my coffee from this morning? When you go to this amount of effort, you want it to be right. The last thing you want to do is spend hours and hours and hours on something, and then someone goes, ah, oh, you missed a bit. Oh, that's got a split in it. Hey, good news too. Well, I don't know. I think it is. I've been teaching myself, if I'm building them, I might as well learn. See how that one just came off? That just jumped off. That's fine. Don't worry about that. But I'm uh, teaching myself the harp. I think I will have some formal lessons. But I can read music, but I prefer playing by ear. And I'm doing pretty well with... Um, Sounds of silence. To, to the point that I was playing it this afternoon and one of my great sounds walked past and started singing it. So it must obviously start to sound like what it's meant to sound like. Pretty happy with that. There are um, so many different variations on this diamond pattern that you can do. You can actually get a really nice effect just using one type of timber. And how you do that is you 
manipulate the grain to give you converging angles. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can switch the grain around. So as you've seen, there's a right side and a wrong side to veneer. What you can do is have half wrong side, half right side, and that will give you a flush in the chatoyance. When you wobble it, it flash one half and then go dull on every second diamond. Then when you turn it the other way, the ones that went dull, they'll flash and the other ones go dull. So the whole heap of things you can do. It really is a, a very um, uh, what's the word? I'll think of it in a minute, but it's very that anyway. Adaptable. You can do a lot of different things just with the one technique. But like everything, it takes patience. Where are we? Andrew! G'day Andy, how are you? Nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. on ya. All your boxes unpacked yet. <laughs> Oh dear, and I'll tell you what, I'm so pleased I finished those music stands. Absolutely thrilled. What have we got? Hey Ben, how you going? No fishing today. Too hot. Uh, Jim, good morning. Mate, that cannon looks absolutely superb. I'd love to see the confetti shot out of it. If you get a chance, come and send me a copy. That would be extraordinary. Uh, so I, um, I thought I didn't have enough of this, but thankfully, Louise, I found another couple of sheets of green. I've got another purple. It was just the green I was running a tallow on. I don't know what the purple is. The green looks like maple, I think. That would be right. Ah, that wasn't good. I just broke it at that. See, that's what happens when you try and talk and work. It's all good. There we go. Okay. That one there. Which one are we on? Oh, let's get on that one so you can see what I'm doing. Even down to there, that little bit, I can... There you go. I can still get diamonds out of that, so I'm going to give it one more cut. Um, how I came up with the width, I just drew it on a piece of paper and said, oh, that looks nice. It's 15 mil or thereabouts, so I cut these couple of bits of timber 15 mil wide. And brass edge in there, you could use a wooden edge, it doesn't matter. And then you just put your straight edge up to these blocks here, push down, and very lightly. It's an idea if you can, I don't always have to admit, but cut this end bit first, because if you're gonna get blow out, that's where it's gonna happen. So if you cut that bit first, and that had half a bit in it, that's why that went silly, but it doesn't matter, I've got three good ones here that I can use. There we go. Okay. So, I might switch over cameras and start gluing that onto here. How we got? Uh, oh, it winds up! Oh, tell, tell you what we can do with a breeze here, mate. It is as still as still. And hot. All right. Now, the uh, technique I've sort of gravitated, whoop, gravitated towards, which I like. And it's contact, just this ordinary um, contact stuff you get from office works or Woolies or something or other and I get a board and then just staple it onto the board. 
What I've done here, because I want um, the shape of the neck itself, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I'll bring it over. If you can see, I've drawn the shape of the harp. Now it's actually about half an inch or, or 10 mil all the way around bigger than what I want. And that allows for, as you can see there, because if you bring it right up to it and you're a little bit short, you can be in problems. So that's why I did that. And I'll show you how great the technique is. When I, when I think of what I used to do, here's some more green, look at that. There you go, more green. Um, what I used to do was, oh, it was just painful. It would take me, I'm, I'm not saying, this isn't gonna take me hours, it most likely will, but, g'day Vince! But um, this is so, so easy to do. All right, so I've got, I don't know if you can see, there you go, thing of glue there. And I'll just pick up one of these. Make sure that I line up okay and I run that through the glue like that. So I've got a glued edge there and then I line it up on the last one I've got there, rub the glue out. Oops. Push it in. And that's going straight onto contact paper. So then I put some, this is uh, that stuff there, whatever that is. And it doesn't stick. And then with a the veneer, I just press it down. So it's glued. That one there and pushes it onto the contact. Now when it's dry, the contact will quite easily peel off. There you go, make sure you get it all the way along. Line it up, doesn't matter if you've got too much on there. You know, my thing with glue, although with this sort of stuff, I don't like too much glue. And there, I've come over to, so I'll put that over. And I've got two lower than what I want, so all I'm gonna do, because I can use those again, is just, Separate it. And I will use those later on. The trick with this is you got to make sure that Everything's going the right way and you haven't sort of inadvertently turned something around that you didn't want to turn around because it's all right when we're at this stage, we can move it and manipulate it, but once it's on the job, no, very hard to do. Yeah, just make sure at this stage everything's nicely lined up. And this one I'm going to take off again. Because I don't need it.
I've said many, many times before, you cannot do marketry if you're in a bad mood. One or two things will happen. Your mood will either get better or you'll stop doing marketry, <laughs> one or the other. Whoops. Okay, now I'm missing a diamond here, but what I can do is we'll glue this on first. The glue's starting to go off a bit. It doesn't matter which way I go, I can do it this way, I could do it the other way. And I need a green one. So one of these that I had before. I guess I've got any loose ones lying. Oh, there's a loose one. I'll just cut this off. Be mindful where that pencil mark is because that's that's showing you that's the bottom that gets glued down. So we'll just put a bit of glue on that. See that glue is starting to go off, so I might. Another bit of plywood, I think. And a lot of these are going to go because when I cut the going to go there so where all these diamonds are under the perspex that's going to get cut out but at the moment I don't know where it's going to be so it's much easier to spend the extra time and whatever and put um, put diamonds where you're going to cut them out rather than trying to uh, work out where they're going to do it and you save a little bit of veneer. I mean, it's just, it's, it just doesn't work. False economy, that's what I was looking for, false economy. Oh dear. Trent, I hope you're not watching because I'm doing this to one of your chisels. You shouldn't, I know. Here we go. So big splodge of glue there. Um, I'm using Tight Bond 1 because it dries pretty quickly and I was told it doesn't get creep. And uh, so far, I haven't experienced with it. So I'm sticking with it. And apparently luthiers love this stuff. So. They know more than I do. I'll stick with them. That's interesting. That's just come off. Here we go. Yeah, that's looking, that's looking all right. Okay, so I need another purple one in there. So what I'll do, 
or Cameroon. Oh, do this down here. And I'll slide that up. There we go. the purple one and here's the purple one have a look see if I see the moon which I can't but I can test it that's down so that one goes there like that there you go so it is starting to take shape isn't it Add another purple one in there, but we'll do that in a tick. And you want to get it as precise as possible because once it's and the genie's out of the bottle and it's very hard to get it back in. <whistles> now at this end it's going to have a shoulder placed over it but I'm still going to mark a tree up to that point I think and what I'm going to do now put that there and get a weight and put it on there to hold it down nice and flat I'll have a bit of a chin wag and um, we can go from there oh what's going on here Oh. Got up saying hi Vince, didn't I? I can just about stand up straight for a few minutes so I hope to get the shed ready to work. Well, I tell you what, I should be sitting on a chair doing this. It would make it lost. Fly on me coffee, how dare it? I should be sitting down here, actually, Andy. But I won't. Ah, uh, have you not got a bacon? <laughs> no, actually, I bought this. I was buying it um, my uh, catering supply on the Gold Coast. And um, what you call it? Coles had it on, which is a supermarket in Australia, had it on special for, I think it was $4.20. Normal price is $9.40 or something. And they had it for... It might have been $4.50. It was half price or something. Anyway, I bought two cartons of the stuff, so I'm right for the next 20 years. It's good stuff. Uh, what am I making today? I'm doing a monetary pattern for a harp, Vince. I got an idea. The, oh, hang on. Where's the other one I did the other day? Oh, yeah, this, this one's going to look schmick. I got halfway through doing this. And I cut out a heap of brass parts the other day but um, then then I thought oh this is going to be so good so I'm going to do that fro what do they call it a fractured Lichtenberg burning all over it so that's one side and be brass the other and the box and everything's all got the Lichtenberg burning on it and then I'm going to stain it Dark brown with brass. I reckon it look absolutely spectacular. Hang on, let's pick all these brass bits up there that I just dropped. Oh dear! I tell you what, that was a that was a noisy, noisy little uh, exercise 
cutting all these brass bits out. Let me just put them all in the right place. There we go. Okay. There's those, there's those. And that and that. And that can go there. All right. Hello, what happened to me chatting? Oh, don't you love it when this happens? One minute I have it and then I don't. It's gone. Oh, uh, live chat. There we go. Here we go. Okay. Vegas, mate, boss, I was thinking about you the other day. I thought I hadn't heard from you for yonks. Welcome back, son. Oh, um, hang on there. Where are we up to? The episode of Woodworking Class is sponsored. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I'd pick something more expensive if I was going to get it sponsored. Uh, Red Star Eclipse, what advice would you have for someone who's interested in starting woodwork as a hobby? Very first thing, work out what it is you want to make because that will set the direction you will go. So if you want to make um, furniture, if you want to make boxes, if you want to do uh, musical instruments, if you want to make toys, Work out what it is you want to make and then break it down again. If you want to make furniture, you want to make chairs, you want to make tables, you want to make uh, things with drawers in it, things with doors on it. Or if you're making toys, or you're making stationary toys like easels and blackboards or you're making pull-along toys. If you're making boxes, you're going to make um, little jewellery boxes, keepsake boxes or bigger boxes. Then once you work out what it is you want to do, then you buy the tools to do that. So my advice, look, in all honesty, all woodworking is broken into two parts. It's either a frame or a box. If you're making a box, it's a box. If you're making a chair, it's a frame. If you're making a uh, bedside table, it's uh, a box. If it's got a door, it's a frame. So yeah, um, work within those parameters and then see how, what your budget is, how far you want to go. You can do beautiful work with just a few basic hand tools. Um, you can do horrible work with a shed full of machinery. It, it just depends what you want to do. Uh, the biggest, the best bit of advice I can give anyone, and I don't know about uh, other countries, but definitely in Australia, if you're going to start, don't start using pine because it'll break your heart. The biggest thing I hear from me, oh, but it's cheap. I can get it. Yeah, it's cheap for a reason. It, it just, it's not nice. Get some nice timber. It's going to cost you a little bit, but it's going to be much better in the long run. Uh, when I went to art classes, I remember the teacher used to say to us, don't draw on butcher's paper. You might do a masterpiece and it's on a bit of butcher's paper. Better off to get a really nice cartridge sketchbook or good quality art board sketch and ruin a hundred of them and then get one really good picture rather than doing one picture on a bit of paper that's not going to last. So yeah, short answer, work out what you want to do and get some really nice timber to do it with and that will set you on the, on the road to success, Red Star. I hope that helps. Oh, Andy, what? Um, don't buy anything you get told you need, only what? needed to do a project. Well, also yourself and that. Well, there you go. I could <laughs> myself answering that question. Thank you, mentor Andy. <laughs> That's good, mate. Uh, don't buy sets of any. No, absolutely. You, you buy a set of something, you use two, and the other three or four will sit in the drawer, you'll never use them. And for me, you bought a set with, you could buy one really good quality tool that you'll use a lot. Bob's on there, good day, mate. Oh, good to catch up. Really is. Vegas. Um, woodwork red. Also, your family friends have got any tools no longer need them. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I don't. Know, I don't have any master in the craft. I just, just puddling along, mate. Puddling along. 
All right, now let's start gluing down quite nicely. And we'll start all over again. Where's that glue? And um, get yourself into a... If you're going to do this, get yourself into a system of doing it and don't deviate. Now, what I, what I do, I've got the downside, which I've scribbled pencil on, and that's facing the right-hand side, and I always put that one through the glue, and then I put it up against this one. Um, sometimes, and I, I will say it happens, I'll make a mistake, and instead of doing that, I'll do the other side. Well, if that's the case, that side's got glue in it, doesn't matter. I'll go back to what I wanted to do originally and do this side um, and get you back into the swing of things. I think we're going to run into some dramas here in a minute. But that's cool. Hey, what's the stream without dramas? Whoop. There you go. Okay. I really like this method. I, I think I originally saw it. Uh, now, there, here you go. Here's one I did two of, and I need two in there, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I saw it in a book. I think his name... John Metcalf, I don't know, it was a course in marketry, great little book, um, got some projects in it that, yeah, they're okay, but um, it's just got some great tips in it. Here, I've got a break in the veneer, but if I can find that thing I had a minute ago, here we go, I'll just put that there and that's going to disappear when I put this on, so I'm not worried about that one. Um, and a great book for this type of stuff. I guess you can still get it. Actually, I've got it open. Got it open on my, my bench because I forgot it the orientation of the grain so I had to go and find the book but that one there by Andrew Crawford um, pretty primitive oh look at that <laughs> hey what a bonus you're rich when you're using 15 bucks as a bookmark um, they're illustrations but yeah good book got some great information that's it on the cake shop um, I should check the rest of my books now I don't know how much money I've got in there um, yeah, it's got some great ideas and concepts. I don't like some of the things. This, this box here, for example, he will show you how to make that. I personally, well, you couldn't even see that, could you? Here we go. Um, this box here, he shows you how to make that, but I really don't like the way he made it. I make mine a, a different way. But it's horses for courses, and it was so nice because I knew I had that information somewhere, and that is another reason I love books, because that information is always in the book, and you might have to look through two or three books to find, find it, but it's there, whereas on the internet, you know, it can be gone in a second. Oh, no, uh, GeoSite, gee, I'm dating myself there, GeoSite has gone down or uh, information no longer available. You know, there's a myriad of reasons why things just disappear. And I don't like the way that's going in there. That's better. Um, whereas the book, if you've got it and you've read it, it is in the brain 
there somewhere. Oh, what have we got? Ah, uh, oh, yes, yeah. go, Boz. I'm coming over to your place, mate. Bags of wall. You get less than a what? Oh, okay. You get less than a foot. Oh, dear. Uh, the, the rest of this harp, speaking of walnut, the rest of this harp is actually Queensland walnut. It's going to be quite nice. I'm running out of bits here so I'm going to have to cut some more up in a second. Can go there, that can go there. That's good. Oh, I did that wrong, didn't I? Or did I? I did? Oh, man. I messed it up, just as I said I was going to do. See, self See, I had that going the wrong way. So now, I'll just glue up the other side. And here we go. Now that's a little bit shy of the line, but I know I've got a good half inch, or half inch, 10 mil. So I'm not too worried about that. That could do with a purple one in there. We'll take that to there, I'll go purple and green. And that one, and that one looks pretty good to me. that way and now I'm back on track I just broke that but it didn't come apart and it's going to get glued down so that really doesn't make much never mind Wait a minute, still got a couple here. and tight. Yeah, before I was doing a different technique and um, it worked. Obviously, I did it for at least 20 years, maybe maybe 30 years, I don't know. Um, but this, this way is just so much nicer. And that one will go there. A little bit more glue. This is this is wood woodworking in real time, folks. How come it costs so much? They're just little pieces. Yeah, well, there you go. 
Oh, I'll show you that tuna too that I made the other day. That's getting posted off tomorrow. La da boom boom. No. It's just. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's just a start. Let me see how it's gonna. I think it's gonna be okay. Because we're gonna lose that when we cut it out. Yep, no, that'll be alright. Now, what I want to do is extend it down here as well. I might put some more in. I'm talking to myself, I know. Okay, this is how you get the diamonds make a poo tickets out of that don't rush it and, and don't be stupid and try and save on the contact and use it twice Okay, so it's two and a bit, and I've got. Oh, I reckon we've got enough there. See, it's good. I've worked out streaming, it's a good excuse. You can talk to yourself, and no one thinks you're mad because you're talking. Well, we're still going good. We haven't been, haven't been cut off like the other day. Um, okay. So I've got a 3060 ruler, or set square, or whatever you call the things. And what I'm going to do is now you've got to do this the right way because if you do it the other way, you get a reverse in the pattern of the grain. So I have a look at it that way. What do I do? With this? I don't know. This is always confusing me. Okay. So that goes that way, which means that's got to go that way, which means that goes that way. Okay. It just, it, it plays with your head a little bit. So you just got to think, I guess, before you do anything. And the channel might even go this way. Bear with me. Okay. Before I cut, I'm actually going to use a pencil. Okay, so if I do that that way, now I'll put that up against what I've got here. And what, I, what I'm actually doing now is just making sure that the chatoyance is the same. Oh, 
which it is. Okay. So, got that there. I'm putting the straight edge up against that. And if you're right handed, it's easy. If you're left handed like me, it's not so easy. But we'll get there. Okay, now if I turn that that way, push it up there, and there we go, we're back in business. And the reason I'm cutting this is the downside that I'm cutting at the moment, the reason for that is it doesn't matter how sharp your knife is, your knife actually has a blade on it like that. So if I'm cutting through the back side and there's my knife blade, I'm getting a much thinner cut on the front side. If I did it the other way, and this was the top and I was cutting, I would have a wider cut in the top. So you don't get that really nice fine touch when it goes together. Um, the technique is called reverse marquetry and it really, it's an advanced marquetry, but if you can get into it, if you want to get into marquetry, it, uh, it really is the way to go because you get much finer lines and detail in your work. But I will warn you, it plays with your head. Because you think, oh, that's going to look like that. Um, when I'm doing the bed, I've got the pictures of the birds that I'm cutting out. And I can see the picture of the bird. But when I'm actually cutting out, it's in reverse, so it does my brain can't see it, so it's just a question then you've got to have trust and faith in your own abilities and uh, just hook in and go for it. not the most exciting spectator sport. Although I think French polishing is worse to watch. And as I've said before, you do not rush it. It's going to take 853 cuts. It's going to take 853. If you do it in 850 cuts and ruin the veneer, you'll be on the eight ball because you've got to start all over again. Don't rush it. Patience. And I want to put some beading on it, which I know to do it on drawers, which is really easy, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do this in a, in a round situation. We'll have to see. Ah, oh. you know, where are we up to? Oh, now, I'll, I'll work on this one then. <whistles> T-Bone, good day, mate! Is, is, is that a gig you've got? 
Daryl? There you go. All right, now. Let's see how I'm going here. Go there. And that's not going to do it. It's too flippin'. That one's got potential. Then that short one, maybe. Yep, that'll do. Okay. Up with the glue. Okay, let's go again. Now, these ones I'm putting on here, I'm not too worried about. Actually, they're going to get covered up. Nearly, nearly have finished. Question. All right, Louise, I'll get to your question in a tick. My dear. I'll just put these last two strips in. And then we'll be good. Now I'm going to leave that there because as I said that's going to get covered up so I can do something else with that and not waste my strips. What is me? There, whiz, 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 whiz. There we go. Okay. I'll just, I'll just see if I can get this on the tablet. Louise, question. Um, I'm working with Brigolo at the moment. <laughs> Good on you. Got some here if you need some. <laughs> Heavy stuff, isn't it? I'm working on some Brigolo at the moment. I am sharpening my blades more than normal. Is that normal? Very normal, very normal, very high in silica. Um, that and brush box. So it will blunten your tools substantially. Cut it off so you're taking the finest of fine cuts. And uh, yeah, you, even not sharpening, I'd be stropping them more than sharpening them because you get a build up of uh, resins and gunk on your blade that you can hardly see. But it stopped it. But that would be what it is. She's tough stuff. All right. Now, I'm going to come down to 
this portion here uh, I've got to find out this blank that I cut how far am I going to come down mm. so I said to Susie this morning it's, it's interesting that I've started the project I've got no idea how I'm going to put it together but and I know when I first started off I would always know how it was going to look before I started. But nowadays, quite frankly, I think, no, I'm going to start and then we'll see how it's going to turn out. Um, <clears throat> all right. So can you see that? You can't see that. Hang on, let me just change cameras around so you can see what I'm doing. I've got to pick this one up. Can you? No, you can't even see from there. So wait a minute. Let me see what I can do over here. Um... Yeah, this, this part coming down here is the pillar. So that's the pillar there. And what I want is the design to come down and then come down to a point on the pillar. And again, I worked out how to do it. But if I can get the... Um, get all the diamonds in place, well, then I can work the rest of it out after that. I'm supposing. Okay, and I have a problem right there. Immediately. This is just a little bit out. So I'll just cut that. And scoop it off. There we go. That's looking better. Anyone see where I put my knife? Oh, here it is. I found it. Stop looking. Um, what are we on? This one's not a nice one, so I've got to take this one out. The good thing is when you're taking diamonds out of the pattern, they do come away quite easily because you're only cutting a, a glue. Come on. There you go. Whoop. <clears throat> so now I can put that one in there, which will bring that down to there. Chuck outside there somewhere. What was that, Louis? Choose the timber, Andrew did. I said to him, he's coming wood chopping. Good call, good call. 
Send him on a bike ride, Louise. Uh, always many gigs during COVID. Oh, that's good, Daryl. Pleased to hear. I just warmed up a bit for you down there. And luckily, I just looked at that. And I put the wrong side down, so that's something you've got to be mindful of too. So not much talking here because I've got to think. you making anyway, Louise? With Brigolo. You don't have to be mad to do that, but gee, it helps. Why do I do it? Why, why do I pick all these easy projects? And, and then for fun say, oh, I think I'll stream it live. I was actually going to mow the lawn this afternoon, but didn't sort of get around it. What are we on? You can see a bit of that. Thought one of them's laid an egg out there. Don't know, we're gonna have to play with that a bit. And that's all right. See what's happened. That one there is not right. Oh, 
idea. I'll be here shortly. But that's that's the challenge too you have working with coloured timbers. <laughs> because if it's normal timber, you know, you're pretty right you can get a match with um a wood putty and that saves you a lot of grief sometimes, but when you're playing with colours, you don't get that luxury. Because it's colour. It's just a little bit off, but I'm hoping I can actually put it in. Which I have. Look at that. Michael! How are you? Hello there. Michael, how are you? Uh, my grandfather used to close his mouth when he was doing good work and thinking. He knew he was concentrating when you couldn't hear him. <laughs> the other thing, I have a, a pipe. I don't know where it is. But yeah, that helps me concentrate. I'm just, I don't know how. It's never had tobacco in it or anything else. But it helps me to focus. And, and the last thing you want when you're doing it is someone going, oh, why don't you do it this way? Have you thought about doing it this way, this way? Oh, you just want to stab them. Oh. So that's why I'm streaming because you guys are fantastic. You don't interrupt me. And you know I'm not being rude if I don't talk to you. Louise, what? Andrew's frame for his bowling shirt. The Brigolo is part of the pack. I am putting it in. All oh, right. So you volunteered to do a job. Well, Andrew can't take the full blame for it then, can he? Okay, now I've got a couple little bits down here to do. Oh, okay. Let me, let me, whoops. I need two somewhere. Oh, okay, that one. All right, we don't want that one. That, if it doesn't work, rip it up, throw it away, because you'll just use it again. I've spent so much time trying to get a piece to fit somewhere when you could actually just start again. But there's something, something to do with doggedness or stubbornness or misery content that you don't want to throw something away. But in all honesty, nine times out of ten, chuck it away, start again. That is going to cause me a bit of grief and I don't know why. Oh, yes, I do. That one's out. See, if I was quite happy just to have it on the neck, I wouldn't have a drama. But, oh, no, we've got to do it this way because it's going to be better. Now that might fix my problem. Just nearly does too. There you go. All right. So that bit there can go in there. Got a mouse or something. Having a munch down under me. Framing guillotine. See, <laughs> that's what I was. Even the mice come out and play. I think he's gone. Yeah, no, we, we can go and play now.
Okay. silent pictures isn't it there we go I'm hope against hope that should be able to go in there yuck uh, the other thing I like about this bond original it goes off nice and quick which is good Okay, so I've got to have one more, maybe two more there, and a purple there and a purple there. And we'll throw that one away because we've decided that one's no good. Oh, I'm sorry, you didn't see any of that, did you? Because I'd put that in the way. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this. There we go. Now I need that there, and then I can cut that off, and that can go there. Tell you what, this is going to look nice. Oh, one more. One more and I think we're done. Huh? <clears throat> yeah, where's Mother White? There it is. Oh, that on there. Squat, 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 squat. Um, and ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -ba -dum. <laughs> I, years and many, many years ago, I used to smoke a pipe and I, I enjoyed it. Um, but 
And then apparently it became not healthy to smoke one. So I stopped smoking one. Um, yeah. You know what? That's a pain. I was going to leave this just put a normal piece of veneer in here. Where are we? Okay, I was just going to put a normal piece of veneer to fill this gap in here. But it just occurred to me, when I put the shoulder block on, you're still going to see purple and green, purple and green. And if I just put a block in there, you'll just see green. So, looks like I'm going to have to do it proper. So, two more strips, maybe. Two more strips. Oh! short one there. Now I've most likely used a little bit more than I had to. But it's going to look a lot better than if I'd skimped Uh, this one here, I'm going to have to just clean that up a bit too, I think. Okay, what have I got that I can take off? Okay, I'll just cut this off here. And bear in mind that it's going to get glued over, so you won't see these bits I'm putting in. So where I've got these gaps here, don't worry about it, it's going to have a big block of wood over the top of it. is one side complete. So what I'm going to do now, whoops, there you go, that's it complete. I've got to do the other side, and of course the other side is reversed, so what I've done, I've actually drawn that on the side. I could take this off now if I 
in a hurry, but I'm not. I'm going to leave it. I'll leave it till tomorrow. There's a couple of little, little things I can do now, which we'll do before I finish the stream. And um, then tomorrow I can go ahead and finish the other side. Then I've got to work out how I'm actually going to put it all together. But I figure if I've come this far, I will work out a way. Let me just put that there. All right. Now here I have just I've got to put another couple of oh. One, two. Oh, another strip of green on here, and then I'll be right. So we'll do that. Whilst we're here, what else is going on? Kelroy's Odyssey, woodworking and maker shop. All oh, good evening, everyone. G'day, how are you? Oh, welcome to, um, yeah, welcome to the workshop. Oh, so that I can save for later on. Where's that other sheet that I did have? Or have I dropped it? Or did I use it? I don't know. I didn't think I did. But there again, perhaps I did. All right, so that took three of those to do that much. So I've got one and a bit there, and then we'll do another one. And I'll leave those to um, set overnight. Actually, what have I got here? I've got to finish that one and do that one. So that one was three. Okay. We will do that. Same, same, same material. And find out which is the downside. The downside will bend like that without splitting. The upside, you won't get as much bend out of it. So that's the downside. So have the downside up. Hit it with pencil. Do it again. Downside pencil. Now to get the variation in that pattern, not all the grains go in the same way, so the green one I'm actually cutting at an angle of 60 degrees much like what I did before get you yeah. oops let's see go that way, that way, that one goes, oh, okay. So get your 60 degree angle. What happens if I put that onto that? Can you see what I'm doing? So I've got my straight edge along there. And I'm gonna cut 60 degrees that way and for whatever reason I'll put a T there so I think that's for top so I know and same with this one strokes it takes, it's how long it takes. <whistles> Try and keep them in order 
Um, it just, the grain matches up a little bit, but these are, are leaves of veneer, so they should be pretty well matched anyway. It's starting to get a bit dull. So I'll sharpen it in a tick. See, it's a bit raggy on the edge. So to sharpen it, a bit of 800 carburetor, wet and dry. And just basically lap it. And then right on the tip as well. Okay. Now we should be the cleaner cut. I say should, but I don't know. Yeah, you, I can hear it and feel it. It's not getting so snaggy. And if you look at that edge, it's cleaner. So I'm just going to put these on top of each other. I'll keep them all together. I'll cut this one, then I'll have a chat. I could be out mowing the lawn, really. But this is much more fun than mowing. I reckon, anyway. But the important thing is to have the edge right up against this edge and have the straight edge right up against your spaces. That way everything's going to be even. Says here it moves. Depending on your cutting mat, mat too, these are, are cheap ones. If you keep going in the same spot, you can wear a bit of a ridge which sometimes can take over your knife. <clears throat> so just be mindful of that. And what you can do to get rid of it, you can, if you've got a jointer, just put the cutting mat over a jointer or you can just move it away from the edge a little bit like that. So there's a gap between there and the cutting mat and that gives me a new area to cut on the cutting mat. In fact, you can see where I've been cutting there. It's starting to dig a bit of a trench. So I just move it back a little bit and create a new cutting space. It's not important that the Cutting board is up against the end because you're not cutting where that is. After a while, you get to hear it and you can tell when it's cut through. I think the biggest problem you can have is you think you're all the way through and you go to pull it out and then you break the uh, 
five is in the end. And maybe we get one more out of that. Okay. Bring the other board over. start putting straight ones on it. I don't know what happened there, Michael, but um, you shouldn't have been. <laughs> I don't know what happened to your messages, Michael. I think I might have... Mistake. Nothing personal, it wasn't meant to have happened. So I'm sorry. I, don't, I pressed the wrong button. You're more than welcome. Um, okay. Now. We look at what's happening here. And that one's got to go on there. There you go. And a couple of green ones.
and the be ready tomorrow so I can do the other side. I don't know where we're gonna go. We're gonna get another one up or not. We'll find out, I guess. So I think we might be could be okay. On the downhill stretch now. I will be talking soon. Now I think I think we're going to be all right. Yep. Saved. There we go. That's enough there to do the other side. Tomorrow. And just pulling it off to make sure I've got no gap. It doesn't appear to be. So I can that on there. And put that on there. And there you go. Tis done. Ah. Oh. We should go work this thing out. There we go. What happens there? Oh, look at that! Oh. Um, yes, yeah, Michael, I don't know what happened then. It just went. But it wasn't anything personal. Well, that is it uh, for me, I think. It's good, been a good hour and a bit. And I've got that done. I'm very happy with that. I'll bring it up to see it. Oh. And I don't know how long before it's going to be finished, but I think it's going to look pretty spectacular when it's actually turned into a harp. So we will see.
So what we can do, isn't it, just see. Actually, what I can do now is put that onto that and that and that. And that'll keep everything nice and flat while it's drying. So that's it. Um, thanks for your company. I really appreciate it. It, it makes it so much enjoy, more enjoyable for me and the ship when I've got someone to talk to. Uh, can't think of anything else. Um, I might stream tomorrow. Oh, I say I might and then I never do. So no promises, but I could. And basically I'll be doing what I did today, I think, um, so I can get that up to speed. And we'll see what else we can do during the week. Got some other things coming up with what I'm building. So that's it. Thank you all for watching. Really appreciate your patronage, your support and encouragement. And this is Steve pulling the shed door down saying remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself, be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop at the workbench again very, very soon. Till then, good night, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. G'day. Catch you later. God bless. Bye for now.